Bros Podcast. Welcome everybody to the Humidus Podcast with your boy Hammer and the giant of Lannister himself. Yeah, Steph here. How you doing? How are you doing, Steph? I'm doing pretty great. I am actually feeling a little bit uncomfortable from the heat, which means that for me, a pasty white man, that means the summer is on its way. Can you believe it? Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's actually, it, it was so hot today that I, I was walking around in shorts and a t-shirt. Yeah, a lot of customers did too. So they're like full summer mode. Mm-hmm. You know what else? You know who else uh, what, had full summer mode on? No. The fucking people going to the junkyard. That's who. <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> okay, that was kind of random, but Can you let me let me explain. Yeah. Let me explain. I mean, yeah, because <laughs> I uh, had one kind of like task to do today, and that was to throw out some fucking old lamps. <laughs> okay. Uh, that had been lying around and. This was the day to do it. I just decided it was. We had them for like maybe four or five weeks. There were just crappy old lamps. We needed yeah. to throw them out, and so I okay. I this is the task of the day. So I um, load my car up with lamps and like some old shit that needed to be thrown away also, yeah. and drive to the junkyard. So come to the junkyard, or at least like five kilometers from the junkyard, I start noticing, I start seeing a lot of other cars with a lot of junk yeah. in and on, like, uh, they had, like, pickup th- trucks with shit on uh, on the, um, in, in the back. Yeah. <laughs> and so, okay, I think to myself, what, what is this? Is it, like, junkyard day or something? And as I approach the fucking junkyard, I see this giant fucking line of cars. Yeah. You know? And it's, like, insanely long. And there's, like, no movement. And I'm like, what? What is this? Do I need to uh, stay in, it's keep in line for, like, hours and hours just to throw out these lamps? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, so I park my, uh, my car in the line. And after, like, 30 minutes... I haven't moved an inch, okay? Not one fucking inch. And th- m- keep in mind, this line is is actually in the middle of traffic. It's just like a, a little bit to the side of the road. Yeah. Uh, people just like drove uh, one half a meter of uh, in from the road. So I decide to stay at it for one more hour, and I get like s- snail speed. Get a little bit closer, but it's it, if I estimate the time, it would be at least two more hours to get to the junkyard. Yeah, and uh, I come to this junction where two two people are kind of uh, talking to people in the cars uh, that are em- employees of the junkyard, and these guys come up to me and they they uh, gesture, so I have to do, take down my vin- window, and um, this guy just says, "You can't, you can't." go in today you can't go to the junkyard because your number plate is wrong <laughs> just imagine my face at that point just imagine my face. this guy is like your number plate plate is wrong so you've been standing there for one and a half hours for nothing oh and I was no. like, okay, okay what do you mean it's wrong yeah it's like this is the first day after the quarantine that the junkyard is open so we have rationed like the the availability for people with the last number on the number plate of their car and i had the wrong number so i had i had, I had to fucking go back and and like store the fucking lamps again <laughs> i was i was so fucking bitter oh my god uh, i was fucking foaming at the mouth jesus christ i mean yeah <sighs> i i would probably just I think I would give up for the day, like just in general. <laughs> I was fucking, you know, I was so angry. <laughs> yeah. There are a lot of old people living in my building. And some of them were like, they gave me some looks because <laughs> I stored some of the lamps down in the um, kind of the parking garage that we have underneath the building yeah. where I live. Yeah. And it's not supposed, you don't, you're not supposed to kind of store shit 
uh, next to your car, yeah. even though it's my fucking parking space. So I do whatever I want with it, you know, and some people have like their spare tires and, you know, winter tires mm-hmm. stored away there. So I thought, OK, it's going to be OK. It's just going to be a couple of days until this blows over and I can go to the fucking junkyard with the lamps. <laughs> and then some of these fuckers just gave me like this shrewd little look like, oh, yeah, you're going to fucking store those there. Yeah. And I almost fucking exploded. (laughs) (laughs) Grandma, listen here. (laughs) I I totally understand what you mean, though. Oh, yeah. So that was uh, that was uh, my day, basically wrapped up in a fine little neatly packed package. Yeah. Um. You did you? Yeah, you worked today, right? I did. I was called down extra to help with some shelving of wares and shit. And. uh, Hmm. I mean, I, there were there was a pretty funny or like strange episode today. Well, it didn't really happen to me directly, but it happened to one of my coworkers. Yeah, because <clears throat> um, she essentially let there was during peak hours today. We had two cashiers running at the same time, and of course we have the um, what do you call that? Like the gambling, the lottery station is separate. Mm-hmm. So um, we had two people doing the cash registers and we were only three working at that time. So the third person, um, she was working or she was doing the, the lottery at the time before she was going to head back and go back to stocking. Mm-hmm. And um, the thing is, this this girl, she's actually quite nice, but she has a little bit of that um, problem expressing herself. She doesn't really express a lot of emotion and she has a crazy crazy case of resting bitch face Mm. so i mean you you, you've probably seen her since you were close by but yeah um uh, she's around my age and she looks very boyish (laughs) so you've you've probably Mm. seen her but then the 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 thing is she's actually quite nice once you just get used to how she expresses herself and Mm. But the thing is, at work, she is actually to the customers and stuff. I mean, yeah, she she doesn't always smile, but she's saying everything um, with, uh, you know, she she says it like she means it. You know, all the all the the courtesy stuff. You know. Yeah, she's got like a genuine, warm kind of yeah. tone. I mean, yeah, she you can tell that when she's like, "Oh, thank you so much," and all that. You know, hello, and all that. She she doesn't. It's not fake. You know, it's it's. Yeah. Uh, so I don't really see a problem with it. But apparently, she gets all kinds of customers, um, you know, just fucking hating her, or like just wanting to be a bitch to her. Uh, oh. And uh, case in point, today there was this one customer who she, well, I she she's one of the regulars. She's maybe in her fifties, mid fifties, um, small lady, and. Yeah. You know, she's been uh, at my cash register many times. She's always really cute and nice and charming, all these things, you know, like. uh... And then uh, I didn't see this, but apparently she walked over. And for some reason, she came back and talked to my colleague who was at the the other the the lottery register. And she was like, hey, uh, I want to wipe off and disinfect the, the handle of this shopping cart. And then, you know, my colleague was like, oh, okay. I mean, like we have the disinfectant and a lot of paper uh, by the entrance. Mm -hmm. And she said it politely and everything and probably just normal, right? And she was actually handing a customer at the same time. And then this this lady was like motioning toward, looking at her intently, motioning towards the the entrance like, yeah, so get to work. And she was like, oh, she was like, what uh, okay and so she got a little bit perplexed but she you know she went and did it so she you know disinfected the handle of that shopping cart quick to get back to the customer right and mm-hmm. then that lady just looked at her like oh it's kind of hard to, for you to be polite ain't it and then she just walked off whoa it's just That's like really... what what the fuck people 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 
People, you got to be more nice, people. Yeah, and just moments before, it's like this this chick was at my register being, or like this lady, and she was being, you know, normal, nice, like she usually is, like with a big smile and all that, and then she just goes over and it's like, I'm going to fuck this girl's day up so bad. It's weird. I, I always feel that when I actually saw that just recently, people in retail work in retail always gets so much shit yeah. i was at mcdonald's actually today i was at mcdonald's yeah and there was a huge line in the drive through of course because people don't want to get out of their car and they yeah. don't want to get it, go inside so <laughs> but i was by coincidence inside ordering and then um this lady came in and she uh she she didn't get ketchup and salt in her bag from the drive through Oh, okay. Uh, so she just came walking in. She was just so fucking mad, you know? And she was like, I didn't get any ketchup or any salt in my bag. <laughs> like, so fucking rude. It was like a, a genuine small mistake that, that was made. And there were like one billion customers, you know? Yeah, one yeah. trillion bags to deliver. And these like 16-year-old girls I'm like, okay, I'm sorry, ma'am. You know? Yeah. And she was like, hm, and walking out. And that's like, what? Th why do you need to do that? Is that necessary? <laughs> you you got your salt and your fucking ketchup, okay? Don't just fucking be nor you don't even need to be, you know, polite. You can just talk normally, like, could I please get some ketchup? Thank you. Like, is that too much to ask? Apparently it is. Uh, mm. I mean, these people, yeah. I mean, usually, of course, we don't know what happened to them during the day. Uh, maybe something, yeah, maybe they stubbed yeah. their toe, maybe they spoiled <laughs> they the dinner, you know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you never know, right? So, <laughs> oh my god, my fucking toe hurts so much. <laughs> I gotta fucking choke some people out, <laughs> yeah. But I mean, <laughs> you never know, right? Yeah, maybe her husband, but, I mean, on yeah. Her. You never know. Yeah, yeah. I mean, of course, you got to respect that too. That's always the thing. But it's like the chain, the chain of things. So she yeah. fucks up somebody else's day, and yeah. then now they spit in the burger of like some other dude who's like, or you know, <laughs> and it just uh, yeah. it it trickles down, you know. Yeah, and that's the thing. Like it, it. I mean, they usually have some kind of thing happening where, or like some some reason for why this is happening, but it doesn't excuse it. You know. No. It's just I like know, oh, know. what the fuck. These things, uh, I don't know. I, I try, I, I really try to. I mean, I've worked quite a few different places of retail myself, and I usually just when I go to a retailer and I want to buy them and as a customer, I always try to just be extra patient and you know, unless they're being a piece of shit, of course. But if they're mm. just making mistakes, okay, I mean, who cares? Mm. You didn't drop a yeah, Ming course. vase. It's like, no, exactly. You didn't scratch a, a famous like, painting. No. And even though you kind of, sometimes things go to shit, you know, and it's not anybody's fault. It's just the way of probability and a thousand repetitions of billions of movements and, you know, gestures and interactions. Yeah. And sometimes they go to shit and that's just, you, you need to kind of have that in your, in your spreadsheet, in your calculations. And even though it feels so unnecessary when that instance occurs, it's something that's actually, you know, kind of norm or in inside of uh, of the calculations, you know. So you just need to accept that that can happen and that will happen. Yeah. So it's a little bit. I I just feel like it's unnecessary. Yeah. Like. Well. Like with me, I mean, I was denied access at the junkyard, and I almost fucking blew up in the face of the old kind of lady giving yeah. me a harsh look. But you didn't. I look. I didn't. I. I'm more disciplined in the name of the emperor. <laughs> exactly. I have been taught well. So uh, no, I didn't. But segueing a little bit away from that, we are trying out today a new segment of the podcast where we're going to talk about <laughs> why are you laughing we're, we're going to talk about some we're going to 
I, we're going to call it the nostalgia corner or something like that, probably. And we're going to do a little jingle. So you you guys know that now it's nostalgia corner time, okay? So <laughs> just just be quiet right now, okay? It's, it's... Nostalgia corner. <laughs> okay, so now, <laughs> now we've established that now we're in nostalgia, this section uh, where we're going to talk about kind of retro games and old games that we have a personal <clears throat> relationship to. Oh, boy. <laughs> Do you like the jingle? I, I, I did. Yeah. It's going to be... We're going to use it. We're going to use it um, <laughs> from now on. Yeah. So, okay. So, today, we're going to talk about The Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time because... What other game is there to start a nostalgia section with other than the most nostalgic game of all time, probably? Yes. And Zelda. Yeah, and I, I would say that for me, who don't have much experience with it, I didn't grow up with it the same way. I just, I, you know, it's, it's kind of interesting to hear your perspective on it because you were more like you, you were part of that nostalgia wave for it. So... Today's nostalgia yeah. corner is definitely going to be hammer time, and uh, okay, so... <laughs> hopefully you can share with me some of that magic. Give me some insight. Uh, yeah, okay. So I will try to convey the feelings and the romanticism uh, that I have towards that game, but it will not be easy to translate into words. So uh, just wind the time back to. Uh, I don't know. 90, <laughs> I, don't, I don't actually know. It was ninety six. <laughs> was, was it? it? No. no ninety eight or something, right? Yeah, it was not like <laughs> I just <laughs> I just threw something out there. Just really, you know. <laughs> Seventy seven. Uh, it was um, way back when, way back in the days, um, a young hammer got a Nintendo sixty four for Christmas with the uh, Mario 64 packing. Yeah. And I love that game, but I also got like 500 kroner, which is like $60 uh, yeah. for Christmas. And I wanted to purchase a game for, for that money. So I went to the kind of toy store where games were sold. And I just, I picked... Zelda, The Legend of Zelda, Ocarina of Time. It was a black box with golden <laughs> golden iconography on it. <laughs> yeah. And, I mean, from the first hour I played the game, I just, I was in love 100%. It was a new experience for me. I never played any of the Zelda games before. And the new, like, 3D perspective on Zelda, which everyone who'd previously played a lot of Zelda games were very anxious to like see. And I, you know, got that straight out of the box. That was my first experience. Yeah. And I effing loved it. Absolutely loved it. The way the game controlled, I, I think I felt it was more kind of intuitive and natural even than Mario 64, which was a very well implemented 3D game. Yeah, true. Um, and the progression, the story, the different environments, the music, everything about the game was just so exquisitely uh, put together and wrought. So you just had to kind of fall in love with it and be immersed 100%. And uh, my buddy also had the game and we were like, we played um in parallel so we we kind of helped each other when the other one was having a, a difficult time with uh, some of the puzzles and you know it could be quite difficult and back in the days we we didn't know how to read english you know yeah so, I mean, we're not natives no we're not native so we the funny thing is if you play the game now you see that there are a lot of hints yeah as to what to do in the dialogue and you know just everywhere just from navi telling you what to do but back then we we basically didn't know anything so we just tried out 
everything, like throwing bombs everywhere, and just yeah. hitting everything with a sword and stuff like that. And when you when you discovered a new secret, it was so fucking magical. Yeah, I mean the feeling. I can I can kind of get a a weak echo, an aftertaste of that feeling now when I close my eyes and think back, but the real deal was so much you know stronger uh so we used a lot we took a lot of time to get through the like first three spirit stones to get the the first three dungeons i guess yeah as kid link we used a lot of time I remember lord uh, jabu jabu and the fish thing you had to oh you yeah you would obviously not know but um you had to kind of there was this this huge fish uh, or whale uh he was um not feeling too well and you had the task of kind of healing him or that was hinted at so in order to get inside this whale you had to catch a fish in a in a bottle and put it right in front of him and then he kind of tries to eat it by sucking sucking it inside his mouth and you disappear with the fish and then inside this whale is the dungeon right which is a kind of cool concept and you know you're inside this body you know and everything is like organic and pulsating and uh and i remember that that puzzle we were stuck on that puzzle for so long there was no internet there was no way we we asked in the schoolyard and none of our other buddies were you know further along in the game yeah so we were kind of at the forefront and that was a problem and kind of that that problem solving when you when you finally managed to get past that you felt like you you unlocked like another chapter in a harry potter book or something you know something you really really loved and you ached to see like the next step and you knew that the next it or, or chapter would be glorious you know really well put together in this environment that you were really familiar with you felt that you could control link and you know you you felt comfortable in his skin kind of yeah and then you were just fed this new chunk after a lot of trial and error of course course. uh and i kind of the entire game was that uh and we used a lot of time i can't remember how how long it took us to beat it but when we finally beat the game i remember feeling this incredible emptiness and my buddy also alexander shout out to him um he was also like man what are we gonna do now what are we gonna <laughs> yeah. do with our lives it was, it was like the the feeling was like so baffling that this game was now over and this adventure was over uh so uh and i can talk about i can talk to like for hours and hours about this game but if i had to like kind of conceptualize why the game is so good it would be the amazing amazing atmosphere that it creates um within you know the the world feels so alive so expansive and so diverse and the secrets hidden within the world uh, they are so elaborately you know placed and they're so magical to find and, and unlock yeah and uh it's it's just kind of the the epitome of what an adventure game should be like you know you you are embarking on a huge and strange adventure with a lot of unknowns and uh you sometimes you're scared like in the forest temple oh yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> so, sometimes you're you're feeling powerful like when you get like um the master sword for the first time or when you get like some kind of upgrade you know when you get a certain number of hearts you get the silver hearts yeah um you get double magic meat or something something like that you feel that progression that you're you know really getting stronger uh and you also unlock these weird smaller secrets like uh when you hunt for the the heart pieces or uh, some masks for instance that 
are you know more obscure yeah uh the the there's always this kind of next level next level of depth and and discovery in the game and as kids you know that wondering where is the next secret where's the next level of secrets we were uh i can remember one thing behind the deco tree you probably saw the direct deco tree right yeah, yeah yeah like in the first part of the game yeah so the deco tree it has like some massive roots uh, that blocks you off from getting behind him and we were like had this theory that if we could just get over somehow get over those roots there would be like some hidden dungeon or or something like that <laughs> yeah. on the other side you know because our imagination was it was wild you know running free and of course that helps when you're a kid you have like this very very strong uh imagination so you can kind of boost up the experience like uh, quite a bit i mean i remember from the little that i played it even i found um this is probably one of the most well-known references in it or easter eggs but <clears throat> when you are on your way to kind of meet princess zelda the first time when you kind of sneak out past the guards outside the castle yeah and then you can, if you look through the window you actually see portraits of mario and peach and like mm -hmm. hanging on the wall inside there yeah i remember seeing that as a kid i can actually remember what my initial thoughts were when i saw that <laughs> i thought like that uh princess Zelda had in her chamber or that the garden she's residing in that the windows were not real windows but they were kind of like um i guess you could say windows into a into different dimensions or something like that yeah that she could like <laughs> peer through to see because it worked like that with the ganondorf window you know yeah, yeah. she sees him and she's approaching the king and kneeling and then suddenly she he can you know see lincoln Zelda while looking at him but but I also thought that was the case with the other windows, so that they were also somehow magical, and that you could see the Zelda could like see peer into other dimensions. Ah, uh, so, so that was my like logic. I mean, because I my wor brain works like I can kind of accept that this was a, a fourth wall breaker, you know? Yeah, because I'm so immersed, so I had to like make up some kind of logical in, in universe. <laughs> yeah, explanation for that. <laughs> But I kind of, I can kind of see because you, you kind of found like um, a way to explain it that is not completely out there, considering what you've already been shown in the game. Seems like no, no. So that's uh, I always like clinged on to that thought, and obviously later when I kind of you know looked on YouTube on like sell the retrospectives and stuff like that, yeah. I, I realized that that was not the case. But the thing is that my young mind just couldn't accept that you know this was just a, a little nod to mario you know <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I, I had to kind of like rationalize it uh but uh yeah that was oh oh my god that game i could go on for hours about the details um you know you can play like this just outside of the castle at the the sort of a tree on the corner uh before you kind of enter the side side uh, the secret side entrance yeah you can play like the sun song and it will open a small hole in the ground and uh it's a very kind of secret thing it's it's not logic at all to to do that there yeah and it's like one secret i never discovered myself and like discovered uh, later in life when when I saw like some kind of a complete walkthrough or something mm. on on the internet. So to think that the game still had secrets, even though I like finished it ten times, even on 3DS, I of course bought that game also and and finished it. So absolutely love the game, and uh, I think that of course some of the love I have for it is pure nostalgia because I was you know it was one of my first real epic games that I ever owned and played myself yeah mm, but um, I still feel that it it holds up 
not you know as well as uh, some other games, but it really does hold up to this day. I mean, I guess we got the um, the fix for that, all right, with the the 3DS remake, which apparently is <laughs> really good and a really well it's really good. updated version of um, of the same game. Yeah, and they even added like some small small extra things. For me, I I wish they could have added more. I mean, just keep everything from the original game and add more. Uh, some, yeah, I don't know. Do, do you ever delve in like Zelda, like conspiracies, theories? No, probably not. <laughs> no, I mean, I've, no. I mean, I think the furthest I've gone down the rabbit hole with uh, Zelda is more like, you know, um, angry video game nerd kind of breakdowns of it and these kind of things. Yeah, right. So, like, so you don't, yeah. Do you know about Ura, Ura Zelda? I'm, uh, I'm looking at the wiki page of that right now. <laughs> okay. I, so, uh, yeah. The thing is that uh, since the uh, Nintendo 64 disk drive was discontinued, yeah, there were some ideas and concepts for games, and Zelda was one of the largest kind of uh, planned uh, system sellers for, for the DD. Uh and they plan to make a kind of expansion to Ocarina of Time with uh, with the disk drive. And yeah. it used to be, the, I think the developmental or kind of leaked name was Ura Zelda, right? Yeah. So like... Which in Japanese know. means behind Zelda, actually. Yeah. So uh, the thing is, uh, there were a lot of kind of ideas leaked from this. And people... The, the Urusella product, people at least theorized that it was very well or almost done to completion. Uh, but since the DD was not a commercial success, it was discontinued and they used, they rehashed a lot of, you know, ideas in Majora's Mask and in Wind Waker and, yeah, in later Zelda games, basically. <clears throat> and the, the, the thing is that people or fans always kind of wanted the or Zelda experience and then they released master quest for the gamecube which is like a kind of harder inverted version of ocarina of time yeah it's like a hard mode type of type of game with harder puzzles and like yeah the perspective is kind of skewed so but the thing is and and nintendo basically said yeah this is this is or Zelda. this is what you're gonna get uh, but still, people were like, "Okay, no, for the 3D release, they'll implement like more stuff from from Ura Zelda." But no, the that didn't happen, of course, because probably the that game is lost forever, yo. Know? Yeah, but it's seemingly not so much though, because it's the Master Quest, right? Yeah, it's the, it's the Master Quest. That's that's kind of what. Or Zelda culminated in. Yeah, right, right. So, but it seems like, because uh, I had Master Quest on my GameCube because it came in my package of the GameCube when I bought it, and uh, it came in your package. Yes. Yes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, it was delicious. And then <clears throat> the thing is, it says here, kind of like. Yeah, it did culminate in that, but then apparently already some of the things that were included in the Master Quest felt like uh, second choice designs that were kind of like created during development, but dropped in favor of the what ended up in the Nintendo 64 version. Yeah. It says. Mm -hmm. But but yeah, I, I, people, I guess... Yeah. People don't want to accept that Master Quest is Ura Zelda, basically. Because uh, if you kind of compare the marketing for Ura Zelda yeah. and the small the images and the stuff that was shown from it, it the Master Quest is basically, you know, in Master Quest, there's just nothing new, really. Yeah, yeah. It's just uh, a, yeah, like you said, it's like ideas and stuff like that that were probably scrapped during development off or uh, the main Ocarina game. 
Yeah. And then they just kind of threw that in there. But I don't know. It's hard to tell. Uh, and probably they don't want to release Ur Zelda, even if they had kind of like the game files, because a lot of the concepts uh, probably are used in later titles. But did you did you finish Master Quest ever? Or I can't really remember if I finished it. I had it on the GameCube. Yeah. Uh, I, I and I definitely played it, but I don't think I finished it. No, I don't think I did it to completion. But that's probably just kind of like random that I just my interest like waned at the, <laughs> yeah. you know particular particular point because i had already completed like the regular occurring of time like zillions of times by then of course so <laughs> but yeah that's um that's a little taste of nostalgia the nostalgia corner uh let's let's close it up with this <laughs> yeah that's, that's the signal now it's closed up so you boy oh boy uh, yeah you you um uh, had a new series that you wanted to talk about today. Yeah, right? I did. Uh, I recently discovered, well, I first learned about it maybe like half a year ago. Uh, mm -hmm. and, and, uh, but then I kind of forgot about it. And yeah. I, I kind of forgot about it. And then recently I just saw it while I was searching for episodes of the new clone war season i just suddenly saw it i was like oh shit that's a thing so i watched it with a buddy and we just kind of like binged all the seasons that came out already and it's it was it blew me away so with that preface it's a show called primal it's by uh gendy tartakovsky the guy who made uh, samurai jack he's also been involved with uh dexter's laboratory uh powerpuff girls uh, he was involved in Cow and Chicken or something as well. Like some of the OG, really good shows from from our childhood in Cartoon Network, right? And he also made like yeah. his own uh, crazy version of the Clone Wars back between um, Episode Two and Episode Three. Yeah, and, yeah, and he's famous for. I mean, I think most famous is probably Samurai Jack because um, mm -hmm. he was like producer on that, and then. You know, Samurai Jack also, I don't know if, you, if you've if you seen it, but it also got a, a final season way after the original run on Cartoon Network, which was not connected to Cartoon Network, like the, the last season, and thus he could include a lot more violence and death, a more unfiltered look, because mm. um, the, the version of Samurai Jack that he envisioned turned out to be a lot more violent than he was allowed to show on Cartoon Network. Yeah. But it still wasn't too crazy. Uh, but but Primal... <laughs> so Primal is essentially the story of um, a caveman who has built, like, a space marine. <laughs> it's just... Mm -hmm. he just mm -hmm. he, he's, I'm interested. He, he looks like he weighs 200 kg of pure muscle. Uh, and he has like really thick limbs and a really thick torso, but all muscle, of course. It's just he's very, you know, he looks like he can take a hit or a thousand. And uh, he loses his family to a pack of like large T Rex resembling carnivores. Because, mm -hmm. and then he, you know, then he kind of decides to. He's contemplating if he should just give up and commit suicide or if he should. should feed the anger and kind of you know go on revenge and then he decides to it gets pretty dark and then <clears throat> he decides to go on revenge and this is only like a recap of the first episode so it's not really spoilers mm -hmm. um but then he meets like another kind of sort of tyrannosaurus looking um dinosaur with a family of her own but she's you can tell that she's kind of like a single mom kind of um the, there's no there's only one of her and the, and her kids and then she's at first he's like kind of approaching her as if to attack her uh but then they also get attacked by the same dinosaurs that took his family and then they end up kind of chasing them off uh or like the, they end up chasing off the the carnivores and it mm -hmm. looks fine and you know the 
uh, clearly the um, the mama dinosaur is is quite intelligent, so she recognizes that he saved her and everything. And the kids kind <clears> of <throat> snuggle up to him, and you know, kind of <clears throat> it's it's very heartwarming and very nice. Mm. And then co- back comes the leader of the carnivores and just fucking obliterates the kids, just like fucking as brutally as possible, just fucking eats them uh, right in front of them, just like grabs them in the mouth and they're squirming and like fucking crying out in pain and shit. And he just like fucking chomps down. It's fucking brutal. And it hits you like a ton of bricks in the stomach. You're like, Oh, that was painful to watch. Mm. And this is an animated show. And, and of course it ends up with um, the caveman and the dinosaur teaming up to kind of fuck up that, um, that giant carnivore, right? And so, you know, and, and after after that, they kind of decide that, all right, let's just survive together. Yeah. Uh, so they become, you know, they're, they're never named, but they're kind of unofficially known as Spear and Fang. Okay, yeah. <clears throat> and each episode, it kind of like, it's kind of about them facing a new, a different kind of uh, threat in the world they live in and it's so well made like the 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 things the because nobody speaks because the caveman doesn't really have a language um like we do he's more like grunting and have different shouts and stuff and he's communicating with this dinosaur who also just has these you know, of course it's a dinosaur but she, she's still really intelligent and uh so nobody speaks it's all just visual storytelling and it's extremely well made and all the every episode you never know what's going to show up it's always like these crazy creatures or concepts and like it's a really really fucked up hostile world and these two just like have to fucking like crawl and drag themselves through it like all the grime and shit and just like using their own you know just just how to say just grit and perseverance mm. and endurance and they just kind of like fucking how to say fucking rip and tears their way through this world and mm-hmm. it, it's just like and later on um there's this the the latest episode deals with a plague and that mm. shit was haunting <laughs> it was so mm. fucked up and nasty and it's just some of the things that i like i'm i'm not a very emotional consumer of media like it takes a lot for me to get like a a real emotional response especially now that i'm in my late 20s but this show man i'm 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 always anxious to see what happens next and i'm just like wow what the oh this is this is harsh but in a good way Mm -hmm. it it sparks emotion and i love it it's just like one of those absolute hidden gems i can't recommend it enough it's like Mm -hmm. one of the best western animated shows i've seen in a long long time where can you watch this show uh, that's where the problem comes in, at least for Norwegians, because I oh. couldn't find a way to watch it legitimately. Um, okay. I, I, I was willing to pay for it because we found the first episode on one of those, um, you know, those streaming sites that, um, well, they're not exactly <laughs> yeah. legal, but, uh, and the first episode was so good that I was like, Hey, I mean, this is worth purchasing and just watching in full, like full quality and everything. So I looked at Amazon they're the ones who had it, but it wasn't available in our region. Oh, I hate when that's the case. You know? Yeah, and uh, because I think Adult Swim has it, but for some reason it didn't play for me. Um, I don't know mm. if that's also a region issue. It didn't I stay think, it. Yeah, but... that's that's probably that's probably a region issue. Yeah. So for we, we do you have a VPN though? I don't. I don't. Probably... I don't recommend that with it okay could be could be we should get, we should we should be sponsored by like nord vpn <laughs> yeah exactly. so, so we we're, could have like a, a vpn yeah have, should, like, please sponsor us we're giving uh, we're giving people more reasons to use you <laughs> hey nord vpn we have like 20 views on our videos that's what then uh, be a sponsor half of which are us for review purposes <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah but uh okay so yeah this this series it sounds really cool i mean the visual storytelling and kind of like i know you love that the kind of gritty violent uh presentation also oh yeah good animation and good coordination um is there anything else that you know other uh, that you would value in this show that you 
that kind of stands out? Uh, the well, apart from the visuals, you mean? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Well, just the subtle story here, uh, because mm -hmm. it's it's always it's never boring ever, and no, it has it gives a lot of depth to beasts because a lot of them are not actually necessarily um just like mindless beasts that, that just survive a lot of them some of them even have like cultures and rituals oh. and these things that are okay. kind of like it's very they, they're like they're like humanoid kind of uh in in mind yes even though they look yeah. like beasts but they have yeah. they're they're highly intelligent to to yeah, an extent right. so right. and that's why like sometimes um there, there's especially this episode with i'm not going to spoil like what happens in it but or like how it comes into play but there's uh, they come across these um the, the a pack of mammoths mm -hmm. and that episode like it turns out th these mammoths actually have a very <laughs> intricate kind of like burial culture and like the, the, it's just a lot of unexpected depth to everything and the way they explore some ecosystems and just like the the world building is extremely well made and the fact that they made all this just shows that exposition <laughs> like the the whenever they just dump a lot of information on you to tell a story and set up a background it's so unnecessary this is a prime example of how to do show not tell because mm -hmm. the entire show is like that and i love it it's just it's so engrossing and I just sit there, I forget time and it's over. I'm just like, I can't wait to see the next one. I don't know when the next episode is actually going to come out, but um, apparently the last, the current, the, the like late, latest one was episode six. It's got to go to episode 10. And I know that the, the remaining four episodes will also come out during um, the first half of this year. And I just mm. can't wait to see the next ones. It's just too bad that they don't make it available easily for for norway because i would easily purchase this yeah of course it's it's like that with a lot of stuff i guess that you in this day and age you are willing to go to that step and pay money if you like something yeah and it's not always possible you know i've i've experienced that myself but yeah and all in all it sounds like a really really good show it's so good. something you should check out all you one and a half listener out there yeah just be, be prepared for the fields be prepared yeah bring a handkerchief <laughs> yeah. and uh stay tuned because we're gonna crank out more episodes of the humanist podcast gotta take advantage of that rona take advantage of the rona no stay stay inside guys okay <laughs> and uh of course also stay humid stay dank <laughs>